Great. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Hyperledger Foundation Workshop, Hyperledger Aries Framework JavaScript 0 0.4.0 release, setting up an agent and issuing credentials. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, this session is being recorded. It is going to be, and it is being live streamed on the Hyperledger YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to post some links in a second in the chat once we kick this off. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, as with all Linux Foundation meetings, this is held under the Linux Foundation antitrust policy. If you have any questions about these matters, please contact your company counsel, or if you're a member of the Linux Foundation, feel free to contact Andrew Updegrove of the firm Gesmer Updegrove LLP. Um, I would really like to thank the three organizers of this workshop, Ariel Kareem, oh, come on, Ariel Kareem and Berend. Um, all of Hyperledger is powered by contributors and maintainers and users of this software. If, it, if, it, if these folks didn't exist, we wouldn't exist. And we cannot thank them enough for sharing their knowledge. And quite frankly, all the hard work they've put into Aries Framework JavaScript, just in general, but also to get us to the 0.4.0 release. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Kareem. And I'm going to start putting some links into chat. Kareem, it's all yours. First section, thank you. So, uh, Baron is sharing my screen. Yeah, okay, that's working. Cool. Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining. Um, as uh, Sean uh, said before, um, um, well, my name is Kareem. Um, and we, I will be giving this presentation together with um, uh, Ariel Gentile from 2060, um, also a maintainer of uh, Hyperledger Aries, and uh, Beren Schlingrecht, um, uh, who works at Animo as well. Um, let me see if this works. Uh, nope, that didn't work. So, um, short overview of what we're going to do. Uh, I'll start off with a well, um, a small introduction. Um, as this. Uh, as this is about the 040 release uh, specifically, we will well, have an overview of the release. Whereafter, we will Berend will show you um, a little demo um, that he has prepared. After that, he will show you a few code examples like how does it actually um, look to work with the 040 release. Um, we'll have a short look at the documentation. Um, a look ahead, what is on the roadmap and what's next. And at the end, we will have a um, question and answer session, which uh, we did this last year, um, a similar session for the 030 release. And there was a lot of, um, there were a lot of questions and we had to cut it short. So um, we uh, expect to uh, to have some, uh, or to, to, to spend quite some time on the, on, the, on the question answering session so we can answer all the questions you might have. So first of all, introduction. Um, since this is a Hyperledger, uh, Hyperledger, well, a global um, uh, Hyperledger meetup, I want to quickly touch on what Hyperledger uh, Aries Framework JavaScript is, um, what it isn't. Oh, sorry, I see that I don't have my camera on. Which is now. Um, so yeah, a quick introduction um, on what Hyperledger Aries Framework JavaScript is. I will not go into the details of self-sovereign identity uh, and all the, um, uh, well, yeah, all the things and concepts around that. If you are interested in that, then I um, urge you to, um, to look up the, the previous session we did on the 030 release because that goes more in depth into well, what self-sovereign identity is um, in general, but this is really more um, specific to the 040 release. So, but to summarize, um, I need to quickly go over it. Aries Framework JavaScript is a, it's a, it's a framework for implementing self-sovereign or decentralized identity solutions. I use both terms because um, I think decentralized identity is the more popular term nowadays. Um, it is based on um, uh, Hyperledger Aries standards, um, which is a collection of RFCs or, or, or standards um, and that are implemented in multiple languages. You also have Aries Cloud Agent Python, for instance. Um, but this obviously is the JavaScript version of it, and um, um, which will become a little bit more relevant uh, a few slides ahead. But Hyperledger Aries. Um, was born in the Hyperledger in the project originally. So because it's a, a, um, a JavaScript framework, the cool thing 
I think what is cool about it is that it's a it's a multi platform um, solution. Um, so that means basically you can run um, um, on the server side uh, through Node.js, uh, but also mobile devices if you uh, use React Native. So um, <clears throat> this is the typical, uh, again, I'm not going to go into the details of it, but this is the typical uh, SSI diagram. You, uh, I'm sure you have seen if you are um, somewhat familiar with SSI. So you have in the SSI, um, which self-sovereign identity. Um, in, the, in that ecosystem, you have usually have three roles. So you have a holder, someone who receives credentials, a verifiable credential. You have an issuer, someone who issues them, and a verifier that is interested in verifying it. And um, additionally, you see at well, sort of the middle, um, uh, in the middle, uh, the, the bottom middle, I guess, the verifiable data registry. And that um, is often a blockchain, but it doesn't have to be. It has to be a blockchain per se. And um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, it is a multi-platform system. Um, and the cool thing about that is, is that it can, um, well, it, yeah, it can help you create solutions for all these roles, right? Because a holder, um, in a lot of cases, um, has a wallet, a mobile application. So for that, you would use React Native. But an issuer and a verifier um, often um, run some kind of uh, server architecture. Um, but then again, you can use the Node.js uh, um, runtime for um, for those kind of solutions. So it really covers all of these things. And by we really do our best to keep um, to well the features that we implement to make sure that they run on all platforms. So if you use um, Aries Framework JavaScript, which will I will, by the way, uh, um, abbreviate by AFJ a lot in this presentation. But if you use AFJ for, for well, your holder, your issuer, and your verifier, then you should be, um, well, yeah, they should be interoperable automatically because it's the same framework. And next. Yeah, so let's go over the release um, overview. And um, the, the, the most pr the primary thing is modularization. Um, that is, we have put a lot of work in making the framework more modular, and that work already started um, uh, before. So in the zero, uh, I believe zero two zero, everything was one big package, uh, and in the zero three zero release, we already started like um, well implementing new features in different uh, different packages, different modules. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, extended that work quite uh, drastically in uh, in the zero four zero release. So I will quickly go over go over a few of these components, not all of them, because they are not all that relevant. But um, on the left, you see uh, in blue the core, um, and the core is just well, as it says, the core is the framework. It is everything you need to run a uh, to, well to run the framework. Um, Below that, you see two, uh, the React Native package and the Node package, so the two in gray. Those are basically the dependencies um, you would need for each platform. So if you're running or if you're creating a mobile application, you would you would use the uh, React Native dependency, so the React Native package. And if you are running a server-side application, um, then you would use the Node one. Um, next. Whoops. So, <clears throat> this is uh, this is just a copy of the of the, the right side of the previous slide. Um, so what what have we added and and what has happened exactly? Um, I've put a little legend um, uh, on the bottom, but uh, in essence, we have some new functionality which you see on uh, in the green tiles on the right. And um, we have uh, packages or modules that were already present. That's, those are the purple ones. We have a package the in the SDK package uh, in yellow that has been moved out of uh, from well, out of the core to its own package, its own module. Um, and we have um, shared components, uh, which you see in orange, which I will explain now in the next slide. Um, oh, there were two slides. So. <clears throat> For those who don't know, um, as I previously mentioned, um, Indy or, or Aries uh, was born in the Indy 
ecosystem. And Indy um, uh, is a, well, right now it's a, it's a, it's a ledger, um, a identity specific ledger under the hyperledger umbrella. Um, but they realized, the maintainers of, of Indy realized at some point, hey, we need, um, it's, just the blockchain is not enough, right? We also need um, software standards protocols for agents. So the, uh, well, the issuers, the holders, the verifiers, they need to exchange information. They need to exchange credentials and we need protocols and specifications for that. So um, <clears throat> along with Indy, and um, uh, I should say Indy Node, which is a separate um, uh, software uh, uh, component, they created the in the SDK um, and the in the SDK, as it suggests, is the SDK that um, you can use, uh, you can use to um, to communicate with the Indy networks. Um, so the, an example that people might know is Sovereign, that's an, uh, an Indy network that is used in, in production. Um, and this in the SDK, it did a lot. Um, it did the, um, what you see, all the way at the bottom, um, it, it took care of the communication with the network. Um, no, <laughs> the bottom, um, of the first, yeah, that one. It, it takes care of the communication with the Indy network, but additionally, it also does, um, it also takes care of storage. So um, the credentials and, 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 and other, um, uh, well, related data objects and models, they are stored, um, encrypted. And that is also something that the Indy SDK did for you. So um, it, it basically also provided secure storage. It, um, uh, it provided um, the cryptographic uh, yeah, functionality that we needed. Um, under the hood, it would call URSA, which is another hyperledger project. Um, and it also um, took care of a lot of anon creds related functionality. And anon creds is, uh, is a new name for what used to be the Indy credential format, which is a specific type of format how to represent credentials. But a lot has happened in the meantime. Um, um, Anoncreds, the Anoncreds credential format, so the Indy credential format, what it used to be called the Indy credential format, that got sort of separated from the whole Indy stack and um, has been uh, renamed to Anoncreds and now is really a standalone uh, credential format standard. Um, and in the meantime, we have, um, and that was already the case in the 030 release, I believe, um, we've added support for other credential formats like the, um, the famous W3C credential format. Um, we, have, uh, we have added support for JSON-LD back then. Um, so a lot of movement here. And as a result of Indy being this one giant rust, uh, dependency that does everything, basically. Um, the result of that is that if you would um, have used every framework JavaScript, you just issue and, and or verify or hold or whatever, but specifically W3C JSON-LD credentials, well, yeah, you needed in the SDK to store stuff. So you would automatically also include the logic that is related to communicating to an indie network, well, maybe you do not communicate with the indie network at all. Um, you would also um, uh, need to include anocreds, uh, the, the, the logic related to the anocreds credential format, while you um, while you might not use that because you are just focusing on the uh, W3C JSON OB format. So. Um, yeah, you're basically pulling in a lot of codes. You're making your package a lot bigger than is necessary. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, that was not something we wanted to continue with. Next slide, please. Yeah, and so, um, and this is not an effort that is uh, totally, uh, or uh, not even mostly done by us, but the Irish community, um, they they chose to basically introduce three new components, Aries Oscar, uh, Indy VDR, and Anogred. And these three components together can be used um, basically as a replacement for the Indy SDK. So they take care of, they each take care of a subset of what the Indy SDK is to do. Um, now there are some other differences there, which I don't, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into uh, because that is beyond the scope of this presentation. 
But so we have a new component that is um, in the Oscar, which takes care of storage and cryptography. Then we have um, in the VDR, which is uh, the VDR is verifiable data registry. So it's really uh, um, the component that takes care of the ledger communication. Uh, and we have Anno, the Anograds package, which is, um, again, it's, it's the, the standard itself, uh, the credential format itself. So it's a package that takes care of everything surrounding that. Um, this slide, Ariel is going to present. Ariel, are you there? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, in, in this slide, we, we are uh, doing an overview of what's on the uh, framework's core and how are we going to to build a, a, an Asian, an equivalent Asian with 040 considering all these uh, uh, module, new modules that Karim mentioned, right? So if you look at the, the 030, we will have the in the core, the functionality related to Indy and, and Ledger that has been moved out and extracted out and, and, and went to to the Anon creds and, and the NDSDK library, so uh, modules. So <clears throat> if you want to build an, an, an equivalent agent, I mean, with an exact same features, but with 040, you will need to use in your project the 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 core and also the anon creds, which is the which is a, pro, a, a a module that adds the main functionality and the credential format and and the the interfaces for anon creds and the Indy SDK that provides the implementation that uh, Karin mentioned before about the the, the secure storage the ledger connection and and the cryptography but we have also the the, the option of uh, creating an equivalent uh, agent but using all these new shared components so in this case we, we will we will need to use five different packages the core the anon crest anon crest rs ascar and uh, in the vdr what will be the difference between both actually uh, I would say that it will be better to use the the, the new one. I mean the the the, the one on the, on the right because the the new and uncred libraries are uh, a bit faster, are uh, more flexible. You can uh, add also uh, support for other lectures if you want, um, and uh, you can. And especially because it also supports the fully support the the new and uncreds specification, something that we will talk a little bit later, right? By the way, if you if you look at the core, you will see that there are still a lot of uh, sub modules, right? So you uh, we can see that we have the bitcom discover features problem report uh, out of band routing, they are mostly related to, to DITCOM messaging. And maybe if we, con if, if we continue on this, uh, with this philosophy of, of modular, modularized AFJ, we can in a, in a near future um, extract them out as, as well. So uh, if you want to, to build an agent that is not support, that, that will not need to support DITCOM at all, you can, of course, uh, uh, do that, right? So maybe we can go to the next slide. Yeah, <clears throat> this is a consequence of removing in the SDK from the core. Um, previously, we 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 had a, a a default wallet, which was the the one that came from Indy, but now, in order to set up an agent, we will need to to provide a, a, a wallet class and interface implementation, which will be done uh, by the ASCAR package, but it, it, there is room to also provide a different one. You can also implement your own wallet as long as it 
complies with the wallet interface that basically needs to to implement some methods for opening a wallet, uh, closing, uh, Bitcoin message packing if needed, uh, key storage, and, and, and so on. And that gives us the possibility of, uh, in a near future, we, we hope to create a, a, a wallet, a, a pure JavaScript wallet that could allow us to easily run the AFJ on a browser, which is something that I think most people from the community is expecting to have some someday, right? So we will talk about that later in the by the end of the of this uh, session. So we can continue on the slides. Uh, yeah, there, there are there are a few more uh, differences, uh, also as a consequence of. Of, of removing the, this the dependency on on anon creds and in the SDK <clears throat> was that previously we had some um, some properties on the on Asian configuration like the this public DID seed and public DID that was used mainly for Indy to to create objects and in the ledger and and that stuff and now we are not using that anymore but uh, we provide a way of importing deeds that were created somewhere else and to also support if we want more than a public DID. This is this, this can be mostly interesting for those who are using AFJ in uh, on the server side or or, or, or in public entities. Uh, we can continue. Next slide. Yeah, and this is another feature that we added. This is not something related to the architecture, but it's something that we are using in our project. So I, I wanted to highlight it, is that we can connect to, we can not only connect to other agents by using uh, okay. connection invitations or, or out of band invitations, which is the classic QR code that we, I, I mean, it's the classic, invitation code that we render in a QR code, but also we can connect directly to a public DID. So this is what is called the implicit invitation. So you just put the DID and the agent will, and, and you set up, well, some stuff like the alias that you, you want to, to use and, and the handshake protocol. And the agent will do all the work needed to create a connection with to resolve that DID and create a connection to to it and also and, and, and the same works from the other side I mean if you if you uh, have a, a public DID you will also receive the, the invitation the, the the connection request and you can decide if you want to 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 accept it and, and move forward and that's it for this slide all right so yeah um yeah so the uh, next section um, of, um about um beyond areas as it is um, as it's called um so as you might have seen um in the beginning um somewhere in the components we have started work for implementing um protocols that are outside of the typical aries ecosystems in other words um um, as I mentioned earlier, Aries um, is comprised of a set of various RFCs, um, but the space is evolving. Um, recently, this year, uh, both the European Commission and the Department of Homeland Security have uh, announced um, uh, what their preferences, um, or, or they have hinted um, on the standards they will uh, they will they will start to adopt. Nothing is set in stone yet, but um they are um yeah they're looking at a certain set of standards um and they are not all aries um, related um if we um, on the right hand side you see an example of this, this is the arf the arf is um, um, short for the architecture reference framework which was um, published by the european commission and i hope it is uh it's big enough to read but um this diagram shows if a few uh, choices uh, they have made. Um, so, for instance, um, 
the um, credential formats that they will use are um, uh, MDoc, which is an ISO standard uh, for proximity flows, and uh, W3C, uh, verifiable credentials, and then um, the SD uh, JWP variant of that for um, for for remote flows. Um, that is uh, for the credential format itself, but then um, we also have exchange protocols. So in the areas ecosystem, we use Bitcom uh, mainly to um, well to Bitcom uh, as a as a mechanism to to issue credentials, to present proof, and to do a variety of other things as well. Um, but the European Commission has chosen to um, to focus on um, the uh, well a bit bit newer Open ID for verifiable credentials spec. So um, in, on the left top left, you can see that they uh, for issuance have the Open ID for verifiable credential issuance protocol, and for um, for the verification side of things, um, it is uh, Open ID. Open ID for verifiable presentations and SIO32. Um, this is not this. All these details don't really matter uh, in the scope of this uh, of this session. But um, I just want to point out that, that there is a lot of movement in uh, in the space, uh, and um, there are a lot of other um, um, other protocols and other ecosystems that are becoming um, yeah more prevalent. Right. Um, so we really. Um, Feel that that there is a lot of value in going uh, or in adopting or yeah adopting support for under uh, other standards outside the Aries ecosystem. Um, for one, it enables a broader um, um, a, a broader range of, of uh, projects that can be used um, in. Um, the second point is a little bit cut off, so <laughs> forgive me for that. But um, what I uh, was <laughs> intended to say there is that it ensures the relevance outside of, uh, well, yeah, um, uh, let's say geographic areas where Aries is the choice. Um, I know that Canada, for instance, um, really uh, uh, really goes for the for Anocrats, for instance. Um, but again, in the EU. Um, um, other other choices are being made, so um, this yeah extending the support to other ecosystems makes it relevant. Also, for instance, for in Europe, um, but this all this modularization and and adopting other standards it really forces us to rethink architecture. And uh, a um, result of that is that it also ensures more long longevity and it makes it more extensible. We have had to define a lot of interfaces, which in the end, if other protocols come around, makes it just these architectural changes that we've that we're working on right now. Um, it's ongoing, um, but they ensure that it will be easier to add other standards later on as well if they become more relevant. Um, and, it, and an interesting feature of this is, um, and one is already possible, is it could and how feasible that is. is uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to make uh, make a judgment about that, but it could facilitate interoperability between different uh, ecosystems and stacks, uh, etc. So, an example of that is which um, you could do now. I have not done it yet, but in theory, you could um, get a credential issued over OpenID for uh, verifiable credential issuance, um, and then um, uh, present proof that credential over Ditcom. So that's an interesting bridging. Uh, thing that it can potentially also bring. Uh, next one. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so in other words, we, we envision, uh, although it's Aries framework JavaScript, it's a bit weird and it, it, it feels a bit weird to us, to ourselves as well. But um, we really think that um, Aries framework JavaScript is it like a sort of all purpose um, self sovereign identity toolkit. Um, is the most valuable. Um, there are a lot of different islands in this uh, FSI space, um, but um, having a toolkit or a framework that can act as a bridge between all of those um, is really valuable, I think. The Swiss Larger Army Knife. Swiss yeah, Army the Swiss Army, Army Knife. In fact, that was the first blog. <laughs> Take it away, Aria. 
So yeah, we are going to talk a little bit more about the, or more, more in details about the lecture agnostic and uncreds, which does, is not something religious, but <laughs> uh, it's uh, about uh, how this, uh, how the, the indie credential format was evolved, especially last year when they became a, a a standalone project uh, because we, we, we the, the community saw that there was there was a lot of value in the iron uh, specification and format let's say uh, because of the the unique properties that has the, this uh, kind of uh, format but the issue for implementers was that it was highly tied to the indie ledger, which was something that was not very appropriate for every case. So the community started uh, this, this standalone project where the idea was to standardize the, the specification because uh, at that moment it was just uh, Part of the in the in the SDK code and and and, and was and almost nothing was formally uh, specified. So this uh, working group has written the Anonymous specification V1 that was uh, compatible with what has been done in Indy, but there were a few tweaks to make it fully compatible with any kind of verifiable data registry besides uh, in right so and, and this working group has, has also developed uh, an implementation in rust based on the shared components that karim mentioned uh, in the beginning of this presentation that's called uh, an rs which has some wrappers for Python and JavaScript. And of course, we have implemented our package on, based on these wrappers. Actually, we developed the wrappers, but that's, that's another story. Uh, I will say that I can proudly say that AFSHA fully supports this Anoncreds specification. Sorry if there are some people from Akapai community, but as far as I know, AFSHA is the only framework that fully supports uh, these new libraries. Uh, but I put this star there in the fully because we don't have official support yet uh, for revocable, for issuing revocable credentials. We can verify revocable credentials, but we, we, we cannot issue uh, yet, but there is an ongoing PR, so it will be soon available. So we can, by the way, we, 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 we support both the new Anon creds and also the legacy in the credentials. Uh, we can go on. So I will talk a little bit about the, how the Anon creds modules are uh, architected. So the idea is that we have a, we have a, a, gener a generic module that uh, defines the, the basic API for Anoncreds, which allows us to create uh, objects like the credential definitions, uh, schemas uh, to get from, from, from any VDR, uh, all those kind of objects. And, um, and also defines the, the, the format, the, 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 how the, the objects are, are format and the interfaces that the implementation have to implement to uh, create the bindings with the actual crypto libraries that are uh, actually doing the, the, the work of uh, doing the cryptography, the associated cryptography and also to connecting to the, to the appropriate uh, ledgers to, to get and, and create the, the objects. So the idea is that um, we we have for a, for an for a, for an agent to work, 
there should be a, a module that uh, implements these, these uh, services for, for holder, for issuer, for verifier, and at least one module that adds a, what we call the registry, which is actually, um, it's, a, it's an interface to the actual, uh, to, to a given uh, VDR. So the idea is that we can, we can register one or more registries in order to support one or more uh, ledgers. It's more, it's something like, it's something analogous to, to what we have in, 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 the, in the DITs. We can support different DIT methods. So we, we can register different resolvers and registers. And in this case, we, we can support different kind of, of uh, VDRs. So we can add, <coughs> we need to add some more registries. So in this, uh, in this case, we, we are mentioning the Indian non credit registry, which is implemented by the Indian SDK package and also with, with the, in the Indy VDR, and the, the, the checked the checked non credit registry that uh, also uh, is is implemented by by another module, which is the check, check the SDK that we will talk a little bit more later. Uh, we can continue move forward. Somebody is asking me if I speak Spanish. Yes, I speak Spanish, I, as you can see from my, from my accent. Um, so, well, basically we support on the, in our, in, in the main repo, we have uh, support for the two, with the, for the classic, let's say the classic VDR, which is the Indy. So we, we support the Indy did method for anon creds which uh, works for, with both uh, legacy and uh, indie dits and also uh, with the new indie did indie method. And uh, the checked, as, as I mentioned, that was contributed by the check team, which is where we was a major contributor on, on in, in, uh, in all this stuff about making an on-credits uh, ledger agnostic. So yeah, we, we can maybe continue a little bit more. So yeah, the, the idea is that if you want to add to add some more some more uh, support for other uh, VDR, it's quite simple. You just need to implement an the Anoncred registry interface with the bindings for the VDR you are using, and if needed because each Anoncred registry is, regi is uh, registered to a, to a, to a particular DID, DID method, uh, you, can, you will need to implement the DID resolver and DID register for, uh, and, and add them to, to, your, uh, to the DID module, right? Uh, so there are a few methods already supported or in, or in development under development by the community, which are the Cardano made by Roots ID and the did web support that we are uh, using, which uh, allows to store and, and, and manage uh, anon creds without the need of using any blockchain at all. So we can put them directly in our, in, in any web server and, and just use the, the, <clears throat> the Anon Creds library. So for instance, in our case, in our application, we are not using in DVDR. We are just uh, using Anon Creds RS. We are using the, the core and, and, and these uh, bindings for the web. We can move forward for the demo. Parent, parent time. Yes, thank you, Ariel. Um, so, I think everything what they just said sounds sounds very cool, but we have to see it in action, of course. Um, so first I'll do a short demo using a wallet that we created at Animo. Um, it is built for a Dutch uh, project, which um, tries to create a minimal set of uh, requirements uh, as like a subset of the ARF, what Green just mentioned. So we, 
the ARF still leaves some like like holes uh, in their uh, first implementation or, or uh, document. And we decided to now fill in those gaps, make some decisions, and then we created a uh, wallet for it together with uh, other companies who also contributed to the project. And I will give a quick demo uh, of this wallet right now. So to see. Yeah, it should be here. Um, so um, here we have a very simple login page uh, for the Dutch Blockchain Coalition. Um, and we can log in with our uh, wallets, which is on the left side. Uh, we, I think we can give some links to the wallet so you can play around with it yourself. Uh, but basically this leverages the open ID for VC uh, specifications. So we use open ID for VCI uh, for credential issuance. Uh, SIOP and OpenID for VP to present these credentials. Uh, and this is just a very nice, simple login flow. Um, again, very demo environment, so <laughs> no additional security uh, is provided. Um, here we can uh, request a credential. Um, so I'll just, oh, oops, I was not mobile friendly. <laughs> I will fill in my information here email and then I'll click share. And then we can see the two wallets that are available, which is Paradigm from us and the Serium wallet, which also does the open ID stack, uh, but with a bit more functionality as well. Um, here we see a QR code. So hopefully I'm the first one to scan this. And here we can see the credential. Uh, uh, we also have a little uh, display here, which is all from the uh, uh, W3C JSON LD uh, specifications, we get this. And this is the content of the credential, which we can accept. And now I have three attendance credentials, which might be a bit much, but it's a demo. And then we can go back and use this QR code uh, to log in, which basically does a proof request of the credential, uh, which we can see here. We want the first name, the email, and ID, last name, and the event. And if I click accept, it will share it. And I am logged in right now, which can be seen here. So yeah, I can see here I am logged out. Again, very, very much a demo environment, uh, fun to play around with. Um, but it shows um, this specific demo quite shows very well that the OpenID for VCI uh, group of specifications is, is very, very simple. Um, it builds on top, on top of a lot of uh, standards that already exist. And yeah, it, 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 it removes quite some overhead uh, to, uh, to, to issue credentials more quickly. Um, and I'll show you that right now. Um, so if I go to the slides, um, from a holder perspective, this is basically the, all the code that you need. Um, basically with a massive asterisk because of course you need more setup with state management and everything, but we're not gonna go into that. Um, so we, we can set up an agent uh, and we add a new module called the open ID for VC client module. Uh, this is specifically for the wallet side, which in open ID for VC terms is the client. Um, and we also need a wallet here, but it's all left out. So we can make a, a nice little example and, we're not throwing a lot of um, unknown modules at you. And right here below, we initialize the agent quickly, and then we call the method request credentials using pre-authorized code. So with the OpenID for VC uh, specifications, you have like a, you have a pre-authorized code flow and a authorized code flow. Uh, for this demo, we rely on the pre-authorized uh, code flow. Um, here we just pass in the data which we scanned. Uh, as the issuer URI, we give in uh, a couple of uh, additional fields. Um, also the, the proof of possession verification method resolver. We love our long names. Um, it's left out to, to keep it a bit shorter, uh, but here you would basically go to a verification method in your DIT document, uh, which will then be used to sign the credential uh, using that verification method. Um, but that's all nice. 
Uh, it's a nice demo, looks all cool. Um, but I think a lot of people here are actual developers. So it would be good to also go through some real code um, in this demo, which is available uh, at this link. Um, we will actually use uh, Ditcom and Anocrats, um, and we will establish a connection uh, with between a holder and an issuer uh, using the in the SDK. Then we uh, receive uh, or we register a um, DID and a uh, in the uh, for the issuer. Uh, then we register a schema and credential definition. Afterwards, we we offer a credential from the issuer using the, the new Anocrats model. Um, once that is received by the holder, we actually migrate the holder to the new uh, shared components. Uh, the underlying database structure for Indy is quite a bit different than for Oscar. So we wrote a custom migration script, uh, which I think we'll touch upon more later. Uh, but the gist of it is so you can reuse your Indy SDK agent uh, credentials and everything that is stored in there with the new shared components. Um, and then afterwards, at the last step, we uh, present a credential to a verifier with the newly migrated agents to show that everything still works as it's supposed to be. Um, and I will just slide to the code. Uh, which is open right here. I hope it's uh, big enough. I can make it bigger if it's uh, not big enough for some people. Um, so we'll just quickly go through the code and, and see what it's doing. Um, again, repo is available afterwards. So if you have any questions about how some uh, part of it is done. Already shared. Ah, perfect. Um, you, can, uh, you can look at it there or ask it in the Q&A after we, uh, we have some time for questions. Um, so first, very simple, uh, we initialize uh, an agent, which is the holder using the in SDK. Um, we can quickly look here to see all those modules that we talked about. Um, I have to go a bit up, sorry. This is for the in SDK. So here we register the in the SDK um, as our wallet. Uh, we register uh, Anocrats, the Anocrats module, and we use the in the VDR Anocrats registry to resolve the Anocrats objects. And here we have the Anocrats RS module, which is a module around the Anocrats JavaScript wrapper, which is um, for Node.js, it uses uh, just pure FFI bindings. And for React Native, it uses turbo modules. Um, for this, we only need the in the dit resolver uh, as the holder. And for the in the VDR, we uh, we supply a network, which is the PC over in test network, uh, which is just a simple Genesis transaction and some information, like if it's a production network, what is the ending namespace and whether we should connect to it on startup. Um, for connections, we supply the module again. It is provided by default, but if you want to modify the configuration, um, you have to uh, supply the module again with the new configuration. Um, so here we want auto accept connections to true, uh, which basically means that if we want to establish a connection, we don't have to go through the entire process manually of multiple steps. Uh, most of the time users just want a single like accept or decline. Um, and it helps a lot with that. Below we have the uh, new credentials module, um, same configuration as for the connections. We can auto accept credentials. Uh, this uses always, which is strongly not recommended to do in a <laughs> production environment, uh, but works very well for demos. Uh, this is the same as auto accept connections. Basically, every credential that comes into the agent, we just accept. Um, doesn't matter what the content is, if it's true or not, we, we just accept it. Works very well for demos, definitely not recommended for production environments. Um, and below that, we re uh, register some credential protocols, uh, which is for now only the V1 protocol, which uses the Anocrats credential format service. And right here, you would specify like a JSON LD credential format service or a legacy indie credential format service uh, to support all of, uh, all of them. Uh, but for this, we try to get, keep the uh, modules as minimal as possible. So that's the holder. Um, 
then we initialize it and with initializing you just you, you initialize the wallet you set up the transports it, i think people that are familiar with afj know exactly what it does um, but it's just setting everything up for you um right now as some of you who might know this who migrated to zero for zero already is you have to create a link secret now uh, the indiest k i think put that under the hood now we have to do it manually um, as, a, as a user. Uh, I think there is a pull request open to also automatically do this for you. Um, so this step should, will probably be just a configuration option. Uh, but very simple here, we just call create link secret on the autocrats module and we're done. Um, below that we initialize the issuer. Uh, I'll just go over the issuer modules and then the rest of the modules I think we can skip because most of the time it's the same stuff. Uh, but here we can see we actually register SCAR, Anocrats, Anocrats Rasm again, FITS, uh, NVDR connections and credentials. Uh, most notably here is OSCAR instead of the in the SDK. Um, again, the new uh, crypto and storage implementation, um, which is required if we don't use the in the SDK. Uh, we have in our DITS module, we also have a registrar because we are an issuer and we have to register our uh, DIT. We can also import it, what Ariel mentioned, so you don't really have, you don't need a registrar. Um, but for this, we, we don't import it. Uh, so we have to register it ourselves. Um, network again, BC over in test network, uh, and the rest is all the same. So below, we actually get to some functionality. Uh, which is creating and registering a DIT Indy. Um, code for this is, is fairly simple. Um, it is a test network, so feel free to copy this seat. It's, it's, it's all fine. Um, basically, what we do here is PC over and has like a web UI where you can create a DIT. Um, and then right here, we uh, copy the seat that we use there. Uh, this is the DIT that came out, so we also put it here. Uh, this would be the fully qualified bit, which is also something we did with, uh, from 030 to 040 is we moved to qualified identifiers for Indy. And here we have the import function, uh, which basically sets all of this up. Um, it might look a bit weird that we used the same as the private key. Um, I had a discussion a while ago why this was the case. Um, I forgot it. Um, but it, I think it was required because this is just how the Indy SDK did it. And for SCAR, we need to keep backwards compatibility. Uh, so this was done there as well. That the seat is actually the private key. And we can register a schema, uh, registering schema, uh, nothing new actually in, in 0 for 0. It's still the same as we had since 0 1 0. Um, so we just register a schema with the same attributes as always. Uh, we have a name, date of birth, email, and an occupation. Um, we did change the interface a little bit, so it now looks actually very familiar to the uh, DITS uh, interface, um, uh, which returns a state. And if the state is filled, then there's some error. And if it's not, then we can just return the schema ID, which we can then use for the branch definition. Let's go there. Credential definition. Um, and again, yeah, everyone already familiar with this, probably <laughs> yelling right now. Um, but here we simply just register the credential definition with the schema. Um, same interface again, nice and consistent. If you know one interface, you know them all. Um, and here we just return it. And right here, we actually establish a connection between the issuer and the SDK holder. Um, not going to go in depth in there because yeah the, nothing really changed there uh we just create a connection in there if you want to see the code uh, it is in the repository um but right here we have something new which is offering an anocrats credential um so right here would be the api for it we have an issuer uh, and we have the credentials module and we do offer credential we use p2 we send it uh, with the associated collection ID, and these are the attributes that we want to issue. Um, and also the credential definition ID, which is required. Um, a simple utility method here to basically wait until the holder has the wallet. 
and then we shut down the NDS K wallets. Um, after that, we migrated. Um, so this is what I meant before with um, we use an NDS K agent, and every wallet that is currently deployed with AFJ uses NDS K. And with this uh, very very short uh, script, you can migrate your in the in the SDK wallets to the new Anagrid structure. Um, you just have to know the database path, which is um, figuring out which path it is, is all provided in the documentation. Uh, so it should be a relatively straightforward uh, migration. Um, so if we go back, then here we can initialize the uh, shared components holder. And we also initialize a verifier. Uh, and then we create another connection between the verifier and the holder. Uh, here we request a, an Anocrats proof um, using this. Uh, so again, the connection ID. And here we basically create a Anocrats specific um, request. Uh, so if in your configuration you add something like, um, uh, I think for JSON-LD, uh, a keyword uh, display here with auto completion and you can do JSON LD and then you can provide the um, the request for a JSON LD credential. Um, it's very simple. And then here we just wait until the credential is or the, the proof is presented and the verifier agrees with it. Um, so let's run the code. I think I can go here. And then we can just simply run yarn start and it will go through the code. Um, if you try to run this uh, after a workshop, every single step requires an enter press so we can go through it. Um, so I'll just press enter. Uh, it's initializing the holder, creating the link secret, initializing the issuer. Now it's going to register the objects that we talked about. So here we registered a bit indie. And then we registered a schema with the full new qualified uh, identifier. And the, the credential definition always takes some time, but there it is. Um, I think if you go to the, 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 the test network, you can see these objects now um, in the web interface. And now it creates a connection between the issuer and the holder. Then we offer it the credential and it's accepted by the holder, which is again, all automatic. Um, don't really have to do any steps in between, which is extremely nice for just quickly developing something. Uh, then we're shutting down the holder and now we're gonna migrate it to the new shell components. So all the indie credentials are moved into the new structure. The keys are moved, um, everything that you would need as a holder or a mediator. Um, again, more and more on that later on. <laughs> Um, then we initialize the holder with shared components, initialize the verifier, all very simple, created the connection, and now uh, the proof is requested. And here we can see that the proof was presented, and this is uh, what we shared with the verifier as the holder. Um, so all of this is now um, quite simply possible. Uh, with the new zero for zero release. Um, and I can go back to the presentation. Let's see. And um, now I think Kareem will tell something about our beautiful new documentation. Well, it's not that new anymore, but um, I did want to mention it because uh, we have updated it um, significantly. Can you go to the next one? Yeah, so in the last, uh, for those who were there in the last presentation, I think about a year ago, about the 030 release, that was, I think, when we first introduced uh, the documentation website. So if you go to that is, I'll send it in the chat so everybody can follow along, aries.js.org. Um, yep, there it is. Um, um, and then we introduced that documentation website. It was very, very minimal back then. Um, it's still sadly not everything has been documented, but I think we, uh, um, we yeah, we're getting somewhere. 
Uh, and the first thing I want to point out is that we have version documentation. So if you are still, uh, we didn't replace everything with the 040 uh, docs. So if you are still working in 030, that is no problem. We will obviously advise you to, to upgrade and to migrate at some point. Um, but the, the, well, the, the documentation that was previously there is still there. So um, that you can see here in the image in the right, uh, the top right corner, you can choose. Um, for different version. Um, and additionally, well, um, Aaron has uh, talked about this quite extensively and um, shown uh, all kinds of examples here that we have, and we already had that previously from 010 to 020, from 020 to 030, and now uh, also from 030 to 040 um, migration guides. So the APIs change here and there. Um, uh, the, the script that Berend just showed you was really um, about the storage. Uh, um, so the yeah the models or the objects that are stored they are slightly different in um, in terms of um, yeah in terms of data structure. So there needs to be some migration there. For that you can use the script. Um, but these migration documentation or pages here they are really like okay what we have the, the, the 030 API versus the um, 040 API and how to migrate. Basically, what, what lines of codes, what lines of codes do you need to change? How do you need to change them? So we, we really try to guide you through that there. <clears throat> and um, yeah, lastly, uh, what I wanted to point out about the documentation, which I think is quite cool, is we have these uh, beautiful little tabs here, as you can see. Um, in the middle, so we have an indie and Anograd step, for instance. There, this is just one example. There are many, um, which basically uh, tells you, okay, if you're still using in this case, um, then this is how you should call this function. Um, but if you uh, are using um, Anograd, then you can use um, well, then then the function call should look like this. Um, I think we can move on. That was about the documentation. Yeah. Then I think it is time to talk about um, the roadmap. Um, and Beard is going to get that. Oh, no, this is uh, Ariel's slide. Um, server side IFJ. Sorry, I was I was writing on the chat. That's OK. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, actually, we, we are already supporting server side actually in our in both uh, animo and us are using uh, quite ex ex extensively the afj for 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 the backends but uh, this is something that we will want to focus on in the in the incoming releases so that's why we wanted to to put it here right um but something that we want to say was that even if AFJ is mostly known for for for, for mobile environments or for the holder side, we believe that or we think that it's good. It's worth mentioning that AFJ supports almost all the features needed to create a, an agent that can work. Uh, for uh, using other roles like mediators, because we we do support we do fu fully support both uh, mediation coordination protocol and also the message pickup v1 and v2. Uh, we have a very basic message queue in in, in our default implement implementation, but we can plug in uh, something more sophisticated like. Uh, storing that in a Redis or, a, or or in Postgre, we can add push notifications. So we have the tools to to make a, an AFJ mediator to to work or to build a, a basis of, uh, of a mediator that is compatible with with any with all the protocols that, that are defined for that. And same for the credential issuance because. We usually usually use AFJ for for holder and verifier roles, but we can also issue credentials in various formats. In the case of the anon creds, it's true that 
we don't currently support revocable credentials, but we are very close to to that. So maybe in a few weeks or so, we we have the the, the PR merge. So in a, in the next minor version, we we will support it. Uh, we can continue the next slide. Some reasons for that. Okay. This is this is mainly uh these are mainly our our reasons for choosing AFJ um, because we have a very small team. You know that it's hard to find skilled developers nowadays. So we wanted to share as much as we could of the code base. Um, so. The good thing about using AHA for both sides is that we don't have to master two different languages. This is not only a problem when you are dealing with uh, with, with, with the with the with high level code, but also if you need to adapt a low level library, because you will need to also create wrappers, and you know that it's it's not very straightforward sometimes to create them. So if we can make the whole team to work on the same environment or with the same tools, uh, it will be usually uh, faster, especially in the small teams. And also the other reason is that we wanted to create custom features. I mean, custom protocols, for instance, in our project, we are using uh, did come for, for, for chat. So we are using, we, we have created some protocols to send media to other, to, to other parties, uh, profile pictures and that stuff. So for us was a lot easier if we should, if we just made a, a single extension uh, for, for AFJ and instead of having to create two extensions for I mean one for for, for, for the server side and, and another for the for the the client side and also some other nice features of AFJ are the storage backend flexibility it's true that at the moment we are a little bit tied to the I mean we we have only the, the implementation of ASCAR as an alternative to, to NDSK but our goal in the short term would only well, Midterm, let's say, would be to 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 make it more not only ledger agnostic but also uh, database backend at agnostic in, in a way that we can adapt it to to use as mentioned in the beginning of the this conversation um, to use uh, to use a browser or, or or whatever. So, and also something that uh, as uh, Karim already answered in the in the chat is that we have a, we do have a, an extension in the Aries framework JavaScript text repo that provides um, provides a REST interface, so we, you can you can easily set up an agent with uh, a REST AP, a, API. So <clears throat> that's our some of the good things about using AFJ on the server side. And that's it. Um, so one question that I think I got from the beginning uh, when I started to work on AFJ was, when will we have web wallets? Uh, which is a very good question. I think web wallets, they, they serve a very nice purpose. Um, and for me, it's always, uh, I think always demos uh, came to mind, like just a quick demo. You, you don't need to host a server for it. It's very simple. Um, and with what we talked about with modularizing the, the framework, um, we uh, basically every, every module we, we separate, we get closer to full web support. Um, because right now the, the main issue is with the framework is we just have too many dependencies on node specific items or react native specific uh, libraries and they are uh, just not provided um, uh, for the web um, and before that with the SDK, there was just no 
like web replacement for the entire India SDK. Um, so we had to find alternatives for that. Um, separating everything out into their own module makes it a lot easier and more manageable to replace smaller parts with a browser implementation. Um, for example, for a demo, you can uh, probably uh, create a an implementation of SCAR uh, for AFJ with using local storage and browser crypto. Um, I think that 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 would be relatively manageable. Um, there is also, of course, uh, WebAssembly, uh, which could use uh, WASI as a uh, for storage. Uh, this is, of course, more of like a full like actual web wallet uh, and not just a demo environment. Like you wouldn't use local storage to, to store your credentials, uh, but WASI would, uh, could actually provide a way to, to store credentials on your uh, local device and access them from the browser. Um, packages like Amocrats are um, compilable to WebAssembly as well. Um, so that's something we can also take a look at in the future. Um, and in the VDR, um, I think as well, but the re-implementation of that um, for what we need wouldn't be, uh, it would be a lot less effort than re-implementing the in the SDK. Um, so browser support is definitely a, a, on our roadmap uh, in the back of our mind, um, like as long as core um, remains platform agnostic, um, we can create modules for everything that we need, and then we can slowly move to a first a demo environment for AFJ, where you can just have a local credential and you can just be a holder in the browser. Um, and afterwards we can move into more serious actual production uh, implementations, for example, with WASI or with uh, decentralized web nodes, uh, which would be a great uh, thing to add to AFJ um, to support secure storage like that. Um, Oh. So AFJ also really aims to support um, at least the required fields of the architecture reference framework, uh, which is the European document that Kareem mentioned before. Um, we are relatively or relatively far with that. Um, we have quite some some basic setup for that. So you know storage. You also you always need storage, um, but there are st uh, still some items that we miss. Um, so, for example, the first one is uh, JWT credentials with selected disclosure. Uh, this is something that Karim and I actually have been working on uh, for a bit to add it to AFJ. Uh, so this is something that might already be there in the 041 release. Um, then there is uh, ISO uh, 18013, uh, which is the MDL, MDOC, MSO object uh, group of specifications. Uh, this is mainly required for the proximity flow. So share your credentials over NFC and Bluetooth. Um, this is something we would love to add to AFJ, uh, but it's just not something that we have uh, a lot of experience in. So we're sort of waiting for um, uh, a TypeScript implementation for this that we can reuse in our framework. Um, and parties are working on that. So we would love to have this before a 050 release. Um, and to be more compliant, uh, we would also need to support basically all the OpenID for VC uh, protocols. Uh, so my issuance and uh, presentation. Um, the demo that I just showed you with the wallet that um, had all those items, but they are um, right now they're not inside AFJ yet, mainly because we, we had to do it a bit quicker and we uh, didn't want to um, now I think about all the architectural things that we're doing uh, for this project, uh, but they will be backported into AFJ uh, to fully support the OpenID for VC stack, uh, which is a very nice uh, thing to uh, optionally add to your agent. Um, and the last item is uh, the ARF mentions, um, I think it's required that all wallets that are compliant need a secure enclave or hardware support or hardware security module or I think Android calls it shared shared secure storage or something. I, I forgot. But you basically need hardware bound uh, crypto, um, which is extremely interesting and some uh, like something we definitely also would like to add. Um, we don't have a, a clear um, 
way to do this uh, yet, but it's it's definitely something we're looking forward to uh, for other parties to help us with or for, for us to implement. Um, and also like even with outside of the ARF, this is just a massive benefit um, to storage if you don't have to deal with uh, exposing your, your keys in memory and being uh, vulnerable to all kinds of attacks with that. I think maybe Karina has something to add to this. Um, no, no. <laughs> I wanted to add like we are pretty, pretty far indeed. Like a demo, the demo Baron previously demoed or gave um, shows that um, uh, not only the Open ID for verifiable credential issuance that is currently included in the zero four zero release as well, um, but um, the the verification protocols are not yet, but as um, as Beren showed you, um, uh, the, the, well, in the demo it works, so there's ongoing work uh, into doing uh, for implementing that, as well as um, um, SDJOT or, well, the SDJWT um, uh, uh, credential formats. We've been working on that, and, and uh, indeed we think that that will be uh, uh, yeah, that will be added to probably uh, the, the the zero four one release already. Yes. Yeah. So one other thing, um, what we what we found out when you remove everything from the core, is that setting up your agent becomes quite a a big chore. Um, we first, we, we just provided some configuration and some notes for React Native specific dependencies. And now you have to provide all these modules and you have to know which one you want to use. And it, it, it can get quite complex and we've definitely seen some GitHub issues from that already. Um, so this is something that we, we know is, is a problem and that we are working on. Um, some of that work would include reworking the wallet a bit. Um, I think this is mainly about separating crypto from the storage uh, but Ariel might be able to fill in uh, in the end if I missed something um, it, we also would like to uh, make the core a lot smaller uh, right now there is still a lot of items in the core very um, bitcom specific um, and just some things that we would like the user to be able to uh, provide instead of the core providing it to you uh, not all use cases need everything and we want especially when working with like native libraries, we want your app to be as small as possible. Um, and not everyone needs a, an indie VDR or not everyone needs uh, the indie SDK for storage when Oscar or your own implementation of React Native MMKV also suffices. Um, so making the core smaller would make the app, in our opinion, a lot better um, because it makes it smaller. <laughs> um, and the last point, which is uh, something that I think is is very important, making AOJ a lot more starter and beginner friendly for people that just just come to this space, is to create pre-configured agent configurations, which is a a nice sentence. Um, so basically, here we would say like, okay, a very common use case is DitConf2, Anocrats, IndiVDR, Oscar, and um, yeah, maybe some configuration for your connections or, in, or a mediator or something. Um, so we can create packages that would just contain that. And then you could plug it in and then your agent setup would be back to just one line of code. Um, for example, also think of like an ARF uh, agent that would be compliant. So you just import one line and the agent that you're using is fully uh, ARF compliant or uh, whatever interop profile. Uh, maybe define so an AIP one agent, an AIP two agent, uh, something that we could have. Um, yep. Yeah, and also and also the didcom support, we can we, we can also pure agent. At the moment, I don't know if uh, I think nobody asked, but <clears throat> we are also pretty close to support also uh, didcom v two in in AFJ. This is one of our priorities for the for the next major release. So the idea is that we will support both Didcom v1 and v2 initially by using Ascar as a backend for that. All right. 
Well, uh, this was um, a brief overview of, uh, of, well, was it brief? No, it was It was not brief at all. It was 80 minutes. This was an 80 minutes overview of the 040 release. Um, there are a lot of questions in chat. Some have been answered, some haven't. So um, the rest of the time is really up to uh, up for questions. So uh, Sean, I don't know if you want to uh, lead that or- um, uh, I'm happy to, we've been, uh as as the presenters you kareem uh ariel and baron have been fantastic about answering questions in progress so we can probably get into some more questions now uh denver i did want to make a point you just asked um about the meetings so those are community calls every thursday they're not like uh, a presentation like what the team put on today um but also we have the asynchronous discussions that happen in um discord we have other workshops and i'm gonna put a link to that right now in chat uh, workshops for non-creds. Uh, Stephen Coran, who was on the call a few minutes ago, he's gone now. Stephen Coran did a fantastic workshop on uh, Ari on uh, non-creds, and we have uh, some previous workshops on Indian Aries uh, that are hands-on. Um, Jorge asked, "Will AFJ support adding new DIDCOM protocols once DIDCOM v2 support is added?" Yes, definitely. So, um, I mean. It is right now that is also possible, right? So, I mean, we have um, uh, DITCOM uh, is currently still part of the, the core. So um, you can see DITCOM has two, or yeah, it has two, I guess, different facets. You have the actual DITCOM core logic, right? And then you have protocols that are built on top of that. Um, and let me quickly find how to go back all these slides. Is that easily done? Yeah, I think here. Um, so as you can see here, um, uh, some, uh, and I think that is the plan to do um, um, in the um, well uh, in the in the coming months, is um, for instance these here these two the action menu and the um, question and answer protocols those are both DITCOM protocols they are find a separate module because you don't like it is not every not everyone needs those right. Uh, not everyone needs DITCOM as a whole, uh, especially now with, with the introduction of, of OpenID for VCI um, and, uh, well, OpenID for verifiable credentials as a whole. You might not want to include DITCOM. So the plan is to move DITCOM out, out of the core as well. So it is basically an optional dependency you can include or not. And then um, with a separate DITCOM module, you'd be able to define other uh, yeah, other modules um, that basically extend the DIT or, or build on top of that DITCOM module. Yeah, so definitely. Cool. And and DITCOM is the reason why I got involved in decentralized identity to begin with. So um, I love. I love it. DITCOM. It's I, amazing. All, all I want to do is make is never have to use LinkedIn again. Thanks to DITCOM. Um, someone just asked. Yes. Just asked, Does a non-creds package support any NIST approved crypto? Uh, this is an AFJ call, and Stephen has left. Can anybody answer that question? Um, so, I think this the very short answer is no. Uh, we use RSA based CL signatures. Um, I, I think Stephen or Mike, probably or Andrew, can give a way better answer uh, on this. Uh, but yeah, the answer is no. I think they are looking for. Uh, at v2 for ps signatures which might be es256 based but uh, i'm uh, making a very big assumption there uh, i haven't looked at the specification for that um but i i do know that that v2 is looking to to broaden their uh, crypto suite cool uh viet asked can we revoke credentials yes uh, I think that that question was actually answered a few times. Yeah, we're so, uh, baked in from the beginning. Yeah, so for for unencrypted, that is true. Um, in a sense that, um, um, I think we can. We're still working on the issue inside of, of of that, but at least you can. Um, so so no, I would say because the issuer is the one that revokes. Yeah, uh, no, that's not yet. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's not yet supported. But you can you can prove uh, that that your credential hasn't been revoked yet as a holder um for uh because replicate i mean yeah different uh flavors if you will of revocation so for um for w3c 
Um, uh, you also have like the status list 2020, uh, one, two, I don't remember. Um, that is not yet supported. So, but that will. Um, yeah, but but will, the, will the, probably the, be added. The, the PR yeah? the PR is almost almost finished, uh, supporting that. So uh, at least uh, an initial support, I think, will be will be there uh, very soon in a few weeks or so. I guess when when, when Timo when Timo comes back from the, from his vacations, <laughs> then then everything will be done. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to tell Timo you said that. Um, will, uh, do Anon creds have any way to add NIST approved key types? Um, I think that's the same question, right? Or well, one was the last one was about revocation, but uh, this is about NIST approved key types, and that is AJ had asked that. But the one before that? Oh, uh, maybe. I, uh, I think there was one about NIST. I'm going in uh, reverse and I'm I'm getting lost. Okay, cool. Uh, was there any was there any consideration to use the FIDO standard to store and manage keys on a mobile device? Uh, not that I know of. Um, I am personally also not too familiar. I've looked into it a while ago, years ago, um, but uh, uh, no, not that I know of. But I maybe someone else can comment to this because I'm not at every working group, but. <laughs> Um, um anybody want to comment on that one um i think if you really want a a correct answer for that um i think in opening an issue at scar would be the best um because basically if, if scar supports it then then we support it um uh, but i'm i'm also not 100 sure no worries uh niall just asked <clears throat> following up on an earlier thread so the non creds and NDVDR modules aren't necessary in NDSDK, for example. And then, I'm sorry, I just noticed Ariel replied. All right, great. And then there's a, a GitHub link. Okay. Uh, in Denver asked, in terms of setup, there are quite a number of issues for Yarn install on Windows for Node version 16 and 18. Are those being recognized? And is it affecting anyone else in terms of the demo running? Oh, that's answered. Um, yeah, but that's... Something that maybe it's important to to clarify for because th there was a th there were lots of questions ab about that in the few in the last few months is that <clears throat> we do have in in the, in the Node.js environment we do have some problems with uh, Node versions below uh, eighteen. So we we support we, we will say that we support Node eighteen onwards. So because there is a, a, an issue on the on the, well, on, on the on the JavaScript wrappers that prevents the shared components to work with the performance they should. So uh, to make it short, you will need to use Node 18 to, to properly use AFJ on uh, Node.js. Okay. Can you explain a bit about unrevealed attribute support in 0.4.0? So, um, yeah, I, I read that question. I do not completely understand it. I guess this is hinting to, sorry, to, uh, to, to select a disclosure, but I'm going to pass this to Baron because he just nodded me that he knows how to have. Cool. Um, yeah, so I... I, yeah, I assume it's about uh, sex disclosure and, and CKPs. Um, so nothing really changed uh, between 030 and 040. Uh, we still support all the Anocrats, uh zero knowledge proof uh, uh, ways. So we uh, predicates, um, selective disclosure, uh, all of that is still in there. Um, for JSON LD issuance or verification, I think we don't yet, but that's mainly because of uh, presentation, uh, present proof V2 support, uh, but we do support the underlying crypto to, to selectively disclosure with um, JSON-LD. That's, that's what it's called. <laughs> Any plan to support it then around time? I'm sorry, Tron, I, I, I stole your role. Um, no, take it, go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I... At, at one point, I tried to create a deno wrapper for the in the SDK, um, which was sort of working. But then I, uh, we all moved to the shared component, so I, I, I left that work. Um, 
I think it's definitely doable. Then then it provides a, a FFI interface by by default or a way to do that. And no, it doesn't really. Um, so I think that would definitely be something cool. Uh, and also, yeah, definitely something we're open for for contributions. Um, I think we can give some pointers, um, and it would just be like uh, SCAR and NVDR and Anocrats. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm going to give you. it back to you, Sean. <laughs> yeah, and if you'd like to contribute, please uh, check out the uh, Aries JavaScript channel on Discord and the meeting that the Aries JavaScript community has every Thursday. Um, I'm going to repost the links for this session in a second, just so everybody's got it. Um, someone asked... <laughs> have Yaku, Yaku, our father, Yaku... Yeah, we already know the answer. That, so we, yeah. Yeah, come on, you're, you're ruining you're, you're ruining the presentation. No, I'm um, the answer to the Deno question. I have a question from Denver from earlier. Um, what? Nope, somebody just answered that. Um, will it be? This is the last open question that I can find. Will it be possible to have more frequent meetups? Nope. Yes, we are. Uh, every yep. week, team meets. Um, and and that that's it's less of like a a demonstration and a presentation like today, Denver. But it, it's the the team is definitely meeting and they're always having uh, conversations on uh, Discord. Um, and we are also to just jump in. We are also like the new features are being demoed there, right? So if someone worked on 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 a PR or something absolutely. that gets in, then they demo it. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm out of old questions or so I've been basically if a question has been answered in in the chat I'm I'm not announcing it again. Um, I think that's it. Anybody else have a, a comment? No, yeah, we we we, we have a question from from from, from Yaku about the <laughs> if we if we suggest to migrate from zero three zero within this SDK to zero four zero within the SDK or go directly through uh, through the the shared components, I would suggest to move directly to the to the shared components. I don't know what the other guys say about that, but no. But can you because because I think the question was about script, scripts or not. Like, how ah, do you suggest? It, yes, it it, de so. it depends in in the yeah that yeah if you if you are using it, it, the, the, the the migration works only for. Uh, on the mobile side, right? On SQ SQLite. Um, yeah, so it's only mobile. Uh, so specifically yeah. for the SDK to SCAR, uh, it's only mobile uh, SQLite. Um, so, well, only mobile-ish. We also have support for, for mediators um, because basically we currently don't support migrating the schema and the credential definition. So uh, a holder or uh, mediator would be perfectly fine to migrate with that. Um, you can directly migrate from the in the SDK uh, 030 to the shared components with 040, uh, but there is a specific order in which you need to run the SCAR migration script and the uh, AFJ storage updater, uh, which is all uh, explained in the documentation from migrating to from 030 to 040 uh, and also migrating from in the SDK to SCAR. So the docs will probably uh, uh, give you everything, every bit, every bit of information you need. Are there any other questions for this team who's done such a great job with this uh, presentation? All right. Um, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. And I would really like to thank the presenters, uh, Ariel Berend and Kareem, for doing such a great job of both going into detail on what's new in Aries 0.4.0, but also, you know, the how and the why and the wherefore, how things work. It was really a great presentation. And thank you. As I mentioned at the start, Hyperledger is powered by the contributors and maintainers who make all these projects work. We would love your contribution. We would love you to be involved. We'd love you to use the software. Uh, check out the Discord and um, the GitHub and the Wiki for more information. I'm going to put the links back in here again. Just a note, um, when we do a workshop like this, let me grab a copy. When we do a workshop like this, I generally, for folks who registered, I'll send out a, uh, a thank you note. Um, I'm going to put these links as well as a link to, a, to the Wiki 
page for this workshop in both the YouTube video as well as in the thank you note in case you want to share the video or share the deck with your colleagues or coworkers or project partners, whatever you're doing. Um, so that's going to go out probably, you know, YouTube is going to encode the video over the course of a half hour, 45 minutes, and then uh, I'll hopefully be able to get that out by either end of day today or first thing tomorrow morning. But I really like to thank everyone for attending. But most importantly, thank you, Kareem. Thank you, Baron. Thank you, Ariel, for doing such a great job. Thank you, Sean. And, and thanks to everyone for coming as well. Thank you all. Have a great day. Have a great day, everybody.